Good evening, everyone. I would like to call this meeting to order of the Salem-Kaiser School District Budget Committee. Christy, roll call, please. Betty Patacoli. Here. Nancy mcmorris Uh She'll probably be a few minutes yep. late. Mark Bateman. Here. Chris Brantley. Here. Floyd Chapman. Here. Rachel Dewey Thorsett. Here. Jeff Fayville. Here. Jim Green. Here. Levy Herrera Lopez. Here. Rick Kimball. Here. Adam Kohler. Here. Paul Kylo. Present. Chuck Lee. Here. Larry Trot. Here. Okay. Christy is going to check to see if we have anyone signed up for public testimony. Okay, and is there anyone in the audience that would like to approach the podium that wanted to sign up? Okay, in that case, Superintendent Perry, if you would give us the update on the state school fund and May adjustment, please. All right, Christy, I have two handouts. And I'd have had these out already if I thought we were gonna get so quickly to this agenda item. So um, you're gonna get two handouts, a white and a green, and you should have at your place a purple handout already. <coughs> this purple handout is everything we have added to date. You've seen this several times, but I thought it was important that you had it to refer to at your place tonight. So Madam Chair, <coughs> Christy, if I could ask, the purple is what you presented in your budget message. Correct, that correct? Okay. that's correct, in the proposed budget. Okay, so um, I'm gonna start with the white handout. This is um, an, a kind of budget update. It will include some general fund corrections that we need to make and then information on the May adjustment. So since the proposed budget has been presented to you, we missed uh, three things. And so we need to add three <coughs> things that will come out of the contingency. Um, an FTE community outreach coordinator at CTEC. This was on the document we presented you about what was included in CTEC. We just never um, got it in the budget document. So it, what, it was not in there. Uh, we also missed a transfer of a point five FTE counselor from title funds to general fund for <coughs> North Salem High School. And then um, we have a little bit more to add to the special ed grow your own program. So those are the budget adjustments which will take the contingency down. Last time I talked to you about the May adjustment. At this point in time, the May adjustment um, is projected to come in at about $11.4 million. It's the adjustment from previous years plus the closeout of the biennium. And so they're truing up all their numbers right now. And of course, this could still change just a little bit, but we think we're getting to the end of the changes. So what we'd like to do with that $11.4 million is to address technology needs. Um, in infrastructure, which includes telephones, switch network servers, and network ac access for all portable classrooms. Currently, we don't have network access to all our portable classrooms. Uh, this amounts in $4 million. We also are planning to address renovation issues for programs and support facilities. This includes our special ed programs that we're getting ready to relocate, Roberts Annex, preschool programs, some additional um, at CTEC, intercom systems, um, and some of those sorts of things at CTEC, support facilities, and to continue putting air conditioning in our school computer labs. That comes to $3.2 million. Uh, we also need to plan for the biennium increase, next biennium increase to our PERS costs. Remember last time we were estimating eight to $10 million increase. We'd like to put $3 million into the debt service fund. We also identified some math material needs that, and you know, instructional materials has been high on my list. We did not think we could get 
uh, that far, but we're going to place another million dollars in instructional materials, and this would be to upgrade our K through 12 math materials. We're close, so it's not the huge investment like with elementary literacy. Then I put in dollars for additional funding for music instruments and materials, and then some additional funding for athletic equipment. Um, on the back, just as a reminder, this, those last two bullets tell you where that May adjustment money come from. In the previous history, that May adjustment money, the tradition has been it's for um, investments in the infrastructure or for saving in the case of PERS for the future. So this fits with how we've spent the May adjustments previously. So. Yes. Uh, Superintendent Perry, can you ex just explain a little bit of how the money, the difference from last week when we met, May adjustment was around $5 million and how we ended up this high? Um, I can't tell you exactly, but my the history usually is you get a state school fund run one day, and then two or three days later you get another one. So last week when we were at the $7 million, we hadn't got gotten that additional four million and it just keeps changing for a little bit of time as the state it doesn't come to you and here's your may adjustment it comes into into you with here's your first may adjustment here's your next may adjustment that's why we call always call it the may adjustments thank you rachel um where does the kicker or not fit into all this okay that'll come that comes next oh okay so that's on the next <laughs> one so okay. Anyone else? Jeff? Yeah, I got a couple of questions. Uh, pretty simple, though, I think. Um, with the technology, technology infrastructure needs um, for the portable classrooms, what's the general split on that for high school, middle school, elementary school? I don't have the answer to the general split of, of which buildings, but what I'll tell you is that um, the goal with this investment is to get across all um, all portables within the district. And I think Bob has that answer if you feel like it's a critical one. <laughs> okay. I can. Is, is it an important one to ask, Jeff? Or Okay, go ahead, well, Bob. I, I can get it later. Yeah. You answered correctly. Okay. So it's across all. Okay, but, okay. Um, I would be interested in knowing what percentage of it is going to the high school versus the pre-K or K uh, kindergarten portables. So, because we might not need as much or the same type of technology for pre-K as we need for the, our high school graduates. Um, I think that's um, not quite the case because what we don't even have is workstation access for teachers and portables in some cases. So there's um, two different types of infrastructure. One is for teacher productivity so they can access their grade book. So that would be regardless of age and of student. And then there's also some wireless needs. And even for our youngest kids, we need uh, wireless access because you can't even use an iPad without wireless access. So this specifically gets us the, um, runs the data line so that a teacher could have access to the internet in the portable. Okay. And uh, with the, with your, uh, with the, uh, the May adjustment, mm -hmm. where of these numbers would go up and or down with, for the, actual when the actual numbers come in, like which one is the one that varies with a deduct or a, um, or an addition? Um, it would be one of three. If there was, a, if it goes down, it would be either uh, technology. Uh, transfer into PERS or instructional materials, one of those three. And um, if, there is act, if there is extra, then it would just be extra, so. I, I will tell you if there were extra, the technology number is if we were really going to do what was right for our infrastructure, it's uh, more than five, mi Five million. I think it's a five point five million dollar number, which would be upgrading all the switches so we could get to adequate bandwidth. It would be um, the whole v uh, new telephone system. So there's multiple additions in technology we do. We're thinking of this as a two year investment with the biggest hit in this year because there's the most um, money at this point. 
Could could you remind me which the three which were the three that were going to get deducted if if there is a deduction? Um, it would be it would, might not be all three, but it would be either um, technology or transfer to debt service or instructional materials. Okay. Thank you. Can I have a ask Good. a follow up? Mm -hmm. um, can you explain the address technology infrastructure needs? Is that all associated with portables? Uh, no. So um, a couple a couple things. Um, there is not all associated with portables. One is um, an upgraded phone system that puts a uh, telephone in every single classroom in the dis in the district. So that's that affects all levels, all places. And with that upgraded phone system, also we would begin to see um, conservatively a half million dollar ongoing cost that would be a savings. So it's investing now to continually save with a much more upgraded telephone system. So that's number one. Um, also out in our buildings, we have very outdated switches that are our switch to the network. And those switches uh, don't allow us to get the um, bandwidth we need. So um, I won't remember the numbers on the bandwidth. If they're but anyway, so we can't get as much as we need to come in because our switches aren't updated. So that's across all levels. Um, and then um, we need to do some work within our uh, server and our backup system because we don't have capacity and we need a, a backup system that in case of a failure protects our information. So it's um, kind of across multiple places. Okay. Um, as the, from the TEL survey, the place that I saw the district furthest from the statewide numbers was in technology. Mm -hmm. I think that's this important. sets us up to really begin that um, investment in whatever it and it won't immediately look like it to every teacher in the classroom but this develops our system so that if we have more um, devices in schools ultimately our goal it, with wireless is that any device that comes to school we have room we have enough wireless access points mm -hmm. to handle the use so this is the foundation of being able to launch if we can continue to invest in technology. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, next is your green sheet. And Rachel, this will address uh, your uh, question. And I am gonna do, this tells you how hard sometimes the information is to get and how sometimes it changes. Um, I'm going to have you strike out one sentence in this as I get to it. So the May revenue forecast was last week. Um, and as we understand it, there is about $105 million that will go back into the state school fund. The second paragraph, that second sentence, talks about the corporate kicker. And I just need to just scratch that out for a minute. So um, the $105 million into the state school fund me is going to mean about uh, seven and a half million to Salem Kaiser. What we think is going to happen right now is that they will put that in the second year of the biennium. So it won't come to us in 15, 16, it will come to us in 16, 17 in our state school fund. That's still a couple of weeks away from being signed um, and the legislation going through, but that's what we think at this time. The information on the corporate kicker, as I understand it at this moment in time, which I didn't understand it that way a couple hours ago, it was in, the corporate kicker was already uh, projected to kick and go into the state school fund with our first number we got. It was already part of that revenue forecast last time. So it's already been calculated. There might be some slight variations on that, but it, um, is we think there's not gonna be additional, a lot of additional money at this point. Um, so what we're looking at is about 11 and a half million. Um, we won't get it till 16, 17, but I do think it's time to think about lowering that contingency because historically, even within the last few years, we've been as, uh, at 3% in the contingency. <laughs> With this thought of additional money, I really think it's time to do some additional investments in kids and programs in our schools. So that's definitely something we're gonna wanna wrestle with. But on this list is, um, just I'll just go down the list, an additional investment in technology. 
we know that if we were going to be on a six-year rotational cycle with our district computers, that would be um, about a $1.5 million investment each year. So this begins to um, kind of shore that up. Uh, we'd like to add up to 12 FTE to mitigate class size at the high school, lower class size by one at the middle school, add five FTE to mitigate class size in self-contained special ed classrooms, add funds for the addition of a couple after-school athletic programs at the middle school, two assistant principals for four of our elementary schools. We have elementary schools over 600. We have um, one that is um, projected to be at 700 next year. This could also help be a training ground for elementary principals, which we do not have at this time. Um, add ca 10 custodians. This helps get us back to some additional cuts that we took a number of years ago in the custodial part department. Uh, it helps shore up elementary schools. Uh, add additional field coordinator and mechanic for transportation at two and then get uh, West Salem and Sprague back up to the same number of administrators as every other high school in town with two FTE. I think in the, if you remember in the proposed budget, I had a little bit of money for nighttime supervision to help those schools. We would remove that and add this instead. Definitely it's not equal, but um, it's, it kind of seems like the right place and time to make some of those investments. So that's my um, kind of recommendation with the uh, May revenue forecast being positive as it was and how um, I, I do think it's time to really consider going from five or from 4% contingency to three. That has been um, easily the historical practice. You've done that several times. In the budget cut years, you even went a lot lower still think it's dangerous to go to 1% as you did at that time, but um, in this case, I, I believe this is the right um, thing to get um, programs in our schools and infrastructure developed at this point. So that is my um, request and or my recommendation on the May revenue forecast. Mark? So a, a process question uh, related to the green sheet. Does your making that as a recommendation mean that it is now incorporated into the underlying proposal to us? Or would this be one of the amendments that would be on the list of amendments as we've described our process? Um, I'm looking at Mike and Mary to answer. Um, th this would be as if this was included in the superintendent's proposed budget when she presented it. If we had all this information, if we had the revenue then, then it would have been included. Okay. Yeah. And if it helps people for tomorrow night, we can also put this on this list now so that you see it for tomorrow night, if you need that. So th I, oh, I don't okay. think it matters. I just wanted to know yeah. what the process is. Yeah, that was, was a good question. Thank you. Yes, Jim. So uh, I was looking at on the green sheet where you add 12 FTE to mitigate class size at the high mm -hmm. schools and the other FTE that you add at the middle schools and the self-contained special ed. And if you divide that by the number of FTE, the number for each one of those is 80,892. Now, is that a fully loaded FTE? Yes. That benefits everything. And obviously, that's going to be different depending on where they would come in on the collective bargaining scale and at what Correct. step. Correct. Correct. But that does include benefits. Correct. Insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else? Rick? So as far as the superintendent's proposed budget, I understand the green sheet's now part of it because that's funds out of the contingency that you had proposed originally. Correct. Is the white sheet part of it now too, the May, May adjustment or? Uh, the, um, uh, the white sheet, the first part, mm -hmm. the first three bullets at the top would be because those were corrections. Right. The May adjustment, here's how, we'll, we'll receive this revenue in this year. And we, um, so these won't be, let me think about this. Um, the technology infrastructure will be a in the, so yes, I'm talking myself into this because uh, the technology infrastructure will be within the technology budget or asset replacement fund. PERS will be in the asset. So we're gonna, even though we're gonna book the revenue this year, it will, it's in the proposed budget for next year. 
Because it raises your ending fund balance this year, and that's how we're going to use it next year. Okay. And it and it it won't um, technically raise on across the board at the ending fund balance because we'll ask the board to pass a resolution for several of these to place them into the special revenue funds. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, it took me a little bit to talk myself into that one. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, Mark. Can, can you run us through the the math again that led you to the three million for the um, the PERS increases transfer, and how that relates to what we think mm -hmm. is coming? <coughs> yeah, I'm going to see if Mike can take that one. So we were anticipating somewhere in the range of eight to ten million dollar increase in costs starting in the 1719 biennium and so looking at the center of that nine million and then looking also at about a three-year path to adjust for those costs and so this is about a third now uh, we can adjust um, some of the uh, payroll rates uh, in the <coughs> 1617 year to include more that rolls into the PERS debt service and then the last year would be the 1718 year. And again, we would adjust based on the numbers that we would get from PERS, what the real increase in that year's payroll rate again. That frees us up, though, in, sub in future years to make the same type of uh, allocation from May adjustments as well. But that was kind of our thinking is how to sort of roll into the increase in about a three year period. All right, that's uh, it for my um, update. Okay, at this point, committee members, does anyone have any additional questions, discussions we want to bring onto the floor? Hey, you're making this easy on me. <laughs> okay, Jeff? Um, can you go through the, the process again on why you think we should go down to 3% for the contingency? Uh, when I look back historically, uh, you have done that uh, to go to 3%. And so I think it's ranged from 3% to 4.1 around in there. But it's hovered around that 3%. Even though we roll up starting at the 5%, then we decide how low we're going to go. So number one, historically you've done that. And number two, we are projecting that we'll get the May revenue forecast increase in the second year of the biennium. So the plan is that if and they could split it over the two years, so we'll either get it this year or all of it the following year. So there's two reasons. One is historically it's, you, we've done that, and the second is that we're anticipating this um, new revenue. Yes, Rachel. So effectively, if they did decide to split the new revenue evenly, <coughs> then they, that would go into contingency or Correct. into the ending fund balance. Correct. And we'll have begun to spend a portion of that whether it comes in now or the following year. Yes, Chuck. I'd just be curious to see how realistic it is to be able to find the, n the number of new uh, uh, licensed teachers that you're budgeting for as far as are, are they out there? Uh, what happens if we can't find uh, qualified people for those roles? Uh, well, that's a really good question and a really um, big concern. Uh, and. It, we had this exact conversation about special ed today. And um, what we think in terms of special ed is that we, if we can't mitigate with additional special ed licensed staff, then we take that money and use it in some other way to either hire additional instructional assistant time or, or maybe even a regular licensed teacher. Um, and. Um, for the other positions, again, we're just going to have to really get out aggressively and see what we can get. Every year, we do have a percentage of positions that we never fill. Yes, Chris. Mine sort of dovetails on that. And I was thinking the other day about the fact we're going to have 50% of our kindergarten teachers are going to be new. I was just wondering if you've got anything built into the budget to help either the mentor program 
get them running or if you have a plan for not putting them all in kindergarten or how, how are you going to deal with that many new teachers in a program like that? Uh, well, in kindergarten specifically, we don't have as many new kindergarten teachers as you think we would have or you'd project because we needed um, we needed about seems like it was about sixty, yeah. um, and but we had a really big number of half-time FTE kindergarten teachers who wanted to go full-time. So I think it was it was. 20 or under that we had to hire and if you think of that across a program that's not so that doesn't no, seem as and then we yeah it, i was actually hugely relieved to see yeah. that for that exact reason and then we also have had a number of our licensed staff become interested in kindergarten so experienced teachers say hey now that kindergarten's full-time i would like to teach that uh -huh. so it's not as dramatic at the kinder level as um I would have thought initially. <laughs> but all of them will be part of the mentor program, I'm sure. Any that are first or second year teachers will be part of the mentor program. Okay. And they're all ready to take that new burden on? Uh, hopefully, if we get the mentor program funding finalized as well. And that's still, we've not gotten final numbers on the mentor program funding. Okay, good. Okay, anything else? Yes, Jeff. Um, just could you touch on the addressing the replacement cycle for the 15,000 district computers for 1 million? Um, how much of the cycle does that cover? Uh, one sixth <laughs> because it's a uh, we we're not on a six year replacement cycle, but industry practice is we should be on a six year replacement cycle. And so this this would help us with one sixth of that with some additional monies that are already in the TIS budget. Okay. So and ideally it's that investment every year. Um, we have a really solid plan for technology that over time we're finding ways to save so that we can then reinvest in that ongoing cycle. So it's not always going to look like another ad. It, it's just if we can do this boost now, that helps us get there. So the voice or the telephone system is that example. Invest now, that's a, that's a half million dollars conservatively in the general fund budget that we won't be spending on telephone services. Okay, so that oh. won't roll into the current service level budgeting um, for future years or will? It will probably, instead of being spent on telephones, help go into replacement technology or something like that. Okay. He's, uh, our technology director has a pretty good plan about where we can save money to invest so that we get to the place where our teachers are saying on the TEL survey, yes, our technology is what it needs to be. Okay, thank you. Can you, what are the, um, the programs, the sports programs, middle school that were being, what were added back and how did you decide? We're, well, I, I'm being a little vague on purpose because okay. I think we want to go back to um, wrestling and volleyball because that's what we cut. But I am not, because it came at us so late, I don't have a good sense 100% that those are the right things. So I want to say we want to add back two programs. It would need to be one girls, one boys. But I want to spend just a little bit of time to be sure those that's the right thing and to look at also what we currently do in some of our community programs okay. with that. Thank you. OK, anyone else? All right, next steps. We will meet again tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock. Uh, we will receive public testimony once again. We will then deliberate and approve the budget if we get to that point. Questions, comments? Yes, Rachel. I have one more question, which is kind of a follow-up to Chris's. So the mentor program funding comes from a separate state fund? Correct. I mean, is are you reasonably confident that that's going to carry forward as expected or I mean if we if we envision professional development and mentoring for this large mm -hmm. cohort mm -hmm. of new teachers mm -hmm. as a priority should we be or could we be thinking about what the district would do if for some reason mm -hmm. the the external funding yeah. didn't come in. That has plan. been um, one of the strategic initiatives 
that I have not seen them waver on at all. Um, now, how much is it going to be in that pot is the piece that we really will be up for debate. Um, and I, I, I think they just haven't gotten to the strategic initiatives yet in the legislative cycle. So, um, Ken, do you have any information? Yeah, the, the application process is late in the spring. They still haven't given us that date. And so we're vulnerable in the timing of, of that process is so late in the, in the spring. Uh, and then we're counting on funding for positions next fall. With that said, we've been funded every year and we have a very strong mentor program. In fact, it's considered a model program for other districts in the state. So I think we should be as confident as we could be in the scenario, considering our vulnerable timelines. But if it doesn't, we then we need, I think we really do have to go back to the drawing board because we know it makes the difference in success for our teachers in that first three years. Okay, we will see you all tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock. We are adjourned. Happy birthday, Chuck. <laughs> I don't want to take any cupcakes, so please. Everybody eat cupcakes. <laughs>